So let's jump into Gmail and check out this problem. So I have this code support form and I don't have a subject line in it. And so when you don't have a subject line in your form, it automatically defaults to form submission dash the name of your form. And what that means for conversation view is you're getting multiple submissions having the same, according to Gmail, like relevance to each other. And so I have this email, Greg filled out my form and I didn't get a chance to reply before Crystal also filled out the form. And so they got merged into the same conversation view inside of Gmail. So here I am replying to Greg and then Greg replies to me. And now here I am reaching out to Crystal when I finally had a chance. And now I'm managing a conversation with both Crystal and Greg, which should be completely separate conversations that are now merged into the same view. So this is a really common issue that I've now been seeing everywhere. Hopefully, you know, Squarespace will take care of this issue on their own. But in the meantime, I have some code for you to add to your site and it'll take care of this issue. Okay, so let's jump into my site. I On my contact page, I have three different forms here. I want to reiterate, so this is not an issue if you have a subject field that's visible. So in this general question form, you know, I want to get their name, their email, I want to know what they're writing about, and then they can add their message. And because no two people will fill out this form the, with the exact same subject line, um, it's just very, very unlikely, then that's no problem because it has a separate subject line. Gmail will create different threads for each of those form submissions. That's not a problem. The problem is when you don't need a subject line in your form. So for my code support form, I need to get the contact details. I need to get some details about the website that they're working on. And then I want to hear about their project. But I don't, it's not relevant for them to be filling out a subject field of what the email is about because I already know the email is just about code support. So in this case, this is what was happening. You know, multiple form submissions were going into the same conversation because there was no subject field. Um, and so it was defaulting to form submission dash code support. So I wanna show you how I fixed this issue. So all you need to do is go to the blog post linked below this video and copy the code into the site-wide footer code injection. And the easiest way to get there because Squarespace is always changing the pages panel, just click anywhere in the left-hand side over here and then click the forward slash. It's also the question mark key. And then you can search for code injection and then paste in the code into the footer code injection down here. Once you've done that, all you have to do is a little bit of setup on the form. So we do need a subject field on our form. And the way that you can add that is if you go to edit form fields, you'll add a new field and add a text field. And to make this text field a subject field, we're gonna call it subject. And the label has to be called subject in order for it to be the subject of the email. And we're gonna do the same for the placeholder. It has to be capital S subject because the code is gonna be looking for a form field that has a placeholder that equals subject. And what it's gonna do is it's going to add the current date and time onto into this subject field. And so that way, when the form submission comes through, it's gonna be form submission, the name of the form, and then it's going to append the subject, which will now be just the date and the time. So it's like adding a unique identifier to each form submission because no two people are going to submit the form at the exact same time down to the second. Um, and, and so you always get a unique form submission. And our form is our code is also going to hide this form field um, so that way it's not visible. So um, that's all you have to do. I already have the subject field at the top, so I'm going to delete this example that I did. It doesn't matter in what order you have this. Um, it just has to be included and the placeholder has to say subject. So if you don't want the date and time added and the subject field hidden, Oh, then make sure on your form, you don't have subject in the placeholder field because the code is going to be looking for the form field with the placeholder of subject and it's automatically going to hide it. So if you want it to be visible, then do not include subject in the placeholder. Okay, so I've done the same with my hire and export form. I want the date and time and I want this field to be hidden. So I've added a placeholder of subject. 
So now that I have my form set up and my code applied, we can go ahead and fill out this form and I'll show you how it comes through. So we'll go test, test, test at test.com. And then we'll just fill out the project details as tests. And then I can go to my Gmail and you can see how the form submission comes through. So it's form submission, the name of the form, and then the date and the time. And the subject will come through as the date and the time. There's no way to hide this from the email itself. Um, but, you know, having a subject that's just the date and the time is, you know, way better than having the previous issue. So uh, just to kind of prove that this works, so it's down to the second, which is great. Um, because if I fill this out again, test, test, test at test.com and test and submit it again, the new form submission will come through with a new date and time because the seconds will be different. And that way they're not concatenated into the same email thread. And there we go. We have a new unique form submission. So this is a great little snippet that you can just throw in your footer code injection. And I want to shout out Beyond Space, who I collaborated with on this code. So I came across this issue because I was having it and I landed on this uh, forum post and he had this great code that um, worked for regular forms, but it didn't work for Lightbox forms. And so I took his code and I just um, sort of changed it a little bit so that way it could work with both regular forms and Lightbox forms. So it was a bit of a collaboration. Um, we've since spoken in the meantime, but kudos to him for kind of first tackling this problem and we've since evolved it. So again, you can grab this code in the blog post below my video. I hope this helps. I've been using it on my own site, as you can see, and I've been loving it. So if it did help you out, please consider leaving a comment below and letting me know. Subscribe to the channel for more Squarespace solutions and code tackling like this, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.